Fly a fair nation. Fly a fair nation. Thank you for tuning in to the Pointless Talks podcast. I am here tonight solo. Tonight we're going to talk about a bunch of nerdy stuff because I'm a book girl. I like to read. And I came across quite a few books that I wanted to share with you guys if you're interested or whatever it is, you know, just in case you wanted to read about gay Caribbeans who write. So before I even get into that, I want to talk about briefly um, trans safety. And, you know, we always talk about Black Lives Matter and all these other things. And a lot of times people in the trans community feel left out of Black Lives Matter because they say Black Lives Matter, but nobody brings to light the things that happen to trans people. Like, trans girls die. Like, <laughs> the rating is ridiculous. Like, it's a real thing, and people don't notice it. And just the other day, something was brought to my attention. I'm pretty sure there are more current ones that have happened, but this one came across my feed on Instagram, and I was just like, yo, this is Donna Street in Jacksonville. <laughs> it's a 36-year-old Celine Walker. She was murdered on February 4th, and, you know, apparently it says that the the Jacksonville Police Department initially misgendered and demanded Walker, like delaying investigation. And it's just a lot of horrible things on the part of police conduct. Um, a couple weeks ago, Zena Ellison in New Orleans was missing. I think she posted something a couple days before just saying, you know, if anyone can spare some coins, I'm short on bills. Just send anything to Venmo or Cash App. And literally on the 15th, she was missing. Thankfully, though, she was found two days ago. Not all stories end like this. <laughs> so it's just one of those things like there's a couple wins out there. Things do happen that, you know, work out in our favor. But it's it's still like trans life matter. And it's, you know, we should we're all black people at the end of the day. So whether you're trans, whether you're cis, whether you're gay, straight, bi, whatever it is, like at the end of the day, it's all one community. And if we don't protect each other, we don't care about each other, then essentially who will you get me so there's that every other week i like to you know bring up something where jamaica is making steps forward <laughs> because it's i'm still in shock about a lot of the things that goes on and i'm getting these news reports and these like updates and i'm just like yo jamaica we're, we're getting better <laughs> we're getting better um I don't, you guys probably familiar with that radical Steve Anderson, this white guy that basically spews hate about gay people. He wants them stoned to death and all this other foolishness. He basically like, you know, one of those Bible slingers, <laughs> like to the extreme version. He has already been banned in many different countries, but he had to, he had a, a scheduled seminar or something in Jamaica and he was banned. <laughs> I don't even know how that got scheduled to begin with, but I'm not I'm not surprised um, because there are still those levels of ignorances at home. So, you know, every little bit helps, though. So apparently him and his son, his teenage son, go figure, were boarding a plane from Atlanta <laughs> to go to Jamaica to, you know, spew his hate speeches when they notified him that, hey, your flight's basically canceled. Like, you're not allowed to go to Jamaica. They they don't want you there. <laughs> so I was like, yay, go Jamaica. But, you know, he's already banned from, what is it, Botswana, Canada, UK, South Africa, and I'm sure <laughs> there's so many other places. I wouldn't, I'm not surprised. But I'm glad that people are seeing that there is a problem with this. Like, and he even believes in, like, you know, the conversion therapy and... <sighs> All of those beliefs that you hear about and you're just like, that's not true. And it's like, yeah, people really do believe that, you know, you put somebody onto some radiation, some electrotherapy, electroshock therapy and was not gay no more. <laughs> so there is that. Um, or is it? Oh, the whole point of the show tonight is to just, you know, bring some books to you guys' attention, some authors that you might, guys may or may not know. When you think about gay authors, most of you guys probably think about like Stacey Ann Chin, who's a Jamaican activist and lesbian and poet. And there's so much more out there other than just her, which, you know, surprisingly, I Googled people because Google's my best friend and... The first person that came up was Marlon James. Like everywhere I looked, like the first thing that came up was Marlon James, Marlon James, everything. And I'm like, who is this guy? So, you know, I looked into him and I'm searching and he's won some, you know, what is it? The Man Booker Prize. He's the first or the second Caribbean to win that. And of course, a Trini man won it before him. But, <laughs> you know, there's that. And he's 
an openly gay man. He lives in the United States now. I was reading this saying that how he he grew up in Jamaica and he went to school there. His parents were police officers and he's written quite a few books that have gotten some good recognition. Um, a Brief Story of Seven Killings, which apparently is like, it's a story basically with like inclination that it's on the assassination of an assassination attempt of Bob Marley that happened, you know, originally in the seventies. And it wasn't about the actual assassination. It's an attempt. And he didn't outright come out and say, you know, Bob Marley, he just referred to the person as the singer. And a lot of people were like, he got a lot of notification for that. A lot of notice and all this thing. Um, He's been writing for quite some time now. He originally, wrote a book called John Crow's Devil. <laughs> I read it. And I started off. I said, John Crow, like really? <laughs> but it's John, J-O-H-N, Crow, C-R-O-W, apostrophe S, Devil, um, in 2005. And that book was rejected 70 times before even being accepted for publication. So, I mean, you know, if you guys have a dream, don't give up. <laughs> but he's here now. And it's basically on a big... Uh, biblical struggle in remote um in a remote village in jamaica so there's that one he also has the book of night woman which he wrote in 2009 which is basically about a slave woman's revolt in jamaica also jamaican plantation in the early 19th century and then there's you know the brief history of seven killings which won the award he <clears throat> currently he's a teacher in um is it Minnesota. <laughs> I always wonder how like we end up in these places because I always say Jamaicans are everywhere you look, but it's Caribbeans in general. But you look up, you know, the demographic for where in America Caribbeans are and it's everybody's always like, oh, New York or Miami. <laughs> so I'm hearing like Minnesota and I'm just like, whoa. <laughs> but yeah, he's a teacher there um, in St. Paul, Minnesota, actually at a college. And he lives in Minneapolis. He graduated from UE. <laughs> and yeah, his parents actually veered him in the path of like writing because, you know, they're really big on books and reading and all these things. So he had a love for it from early. And of course, you know, he accepted that he was gay while he was home. And that's one of the reasons why he left He for fear of public violence. And as sad as that is, I mean, he still calls Jamaica home and all this. And I've seen him on a couple of interviews talking about like, basically, you know, he would love to do what he's doing in Jamaica, but the culture isn't quite ready for it yet, which I completely agree with. I mean, like I said, we're making strides. And every time I find something that shows that we are making strides, it just it's another check mark for us. So it's just like, you know, go us. Um, there's a fantasy novel that he's doing called Black Leopard, Red Wolf. It's going to be like a series. It's fantasy. Um, it's about a church goer who went. A <laughs> it's. It's one of those, you know, conversion therapy type of things. And he apparently I was reading into him and it says that he was one of those like heavy churchgoers. And he himself like tried to go through the attempt to cure himself of being gay. And I know a lot of I know quite a few people who have gone through that whole, you know, I believe so strongly in my faith, but this is wrong. This is, you know, against my religion. And I'm sorry, but I don't understand that kind of conflict because I personally feel like if you live your life right and you're not doing anything to harm anyone, you're not, you know, being intentionally malicious to anyone, then, you know, the creator is going to see you for who you are and you're going to go based on that. But if you're thinking that something that happens to you naturally, like you're not out here saying, I want to be gay. I want to be attracted to the same gender. You know what I'm saying? And I, I want to feel like I'm not, I'm gender misplaced. Like I'm, these aren't things that people just wake up and say, Hey, I want to go through these struggles. <laughs> you know what I'm saying these are things that you can't help. And it's either you live in denial or you accept what it is that, you know, who you are and you live your life based on that. Because I know people who have gone through this, like I said, and they're very, very deep in their faith and they struggle with their sexuality as a result of it because they're like, listen, I love God, but you know, and I'm just like, where does God say this? But <laughs> that's a subject for a whole nother time. But, you know, it's just one of those things where you struggle with it because Everyone is saying this isn't right. This isn't okay. You're living in sin. And it's like, 
doesn't the Bible say no sin is greater than the other? <laughs> so it's like all these people telling you this, but guess what? They're passing judgment. They're lying. They're having premarital sex. They're doing all these things that are considered sin. They're coveting neighbors' wives and et cetera, et cetera. But they're sitting there pointing the finger at you because you love differently. You know what I'm saying? But that's just something else. That's that. Um, there's also a couple of the authors I came across. There's an O'Brien Dennis. I hope I'm saying his name properly. Um, he wrote a book called Love on the Wire. It's a Jamaican love story, <laughs> Jamaican gay love story. I read some of that book and like I read like the first page because I'm like going through I oh before I didn't even get into this if for people who read a lot there's this app called overdrive media if you have a library card you don't have to go to the library just type it in and you can rent books from your local library most books are on there some of them aren't like some you know but apparently you can request it if you're into that you know kindle and all that stuff you can read it if you are on your phone etc but I that's how I ended up reading like a page of it and <laughs> it was just so intense I was like yo <laughs> but he has a couple books um Love on the Wire and he also has The Cries of Men Vi um Voices of Jamaican Men Who Have Been Raped that one seems very heavy I haven't looked at that one yet and there's another one um Understanding Male Sexual Abuse Why Male Victims Remain Silent that is a big thing because there's so many stories of men being abused that don't come to the light because for so many reasons, I'm pretty sure the bo um, book touches on it versus, you know, whether it's shame or fear or whatever it is, because there's always a stigma that it looks like women are the only ones that are victims. And I spoke about this on my last um, one of my last episodes where I said, you know, like auntie or <laughs> whoever it is down the street you know, they take advantage or the babysitter or something like that. You leave your sons with these people and you trust them. And it's the same thing with your daughters. But people don't usually shed the light on men like little boys who get victimized because they always assume that women wouldn't do that to children or, you know, boys, they can handle it. He's a boy. Or, you know, if in the other case, like I said before, you don't want pussy, you're gay. Like, you know, those those stigmas are placed upon it and whether they're gay or not or whatever the case is or whether they just don't want to do it, they keep silent because on top of the fear of, you know, people not believing them, which happens also with men, <laughs> you know, people not believing them or them having to deal with the shame or having to go into any kind of conflict, making it quote unquote bigger than it is already by just keeping the secret. There's so many other reasons why they don't. And I, I'm definitely going to be reading that book, um, to figure out, you know, where exactly he went with it. And, you know, he's, <laughs> he's pretty intense. He, what is it? He was born in Jamaica also. And he was, oh, well, there you go. He was sexually abused while living in the ghettos of Kingston by a trusted neighbor. <laughs> So exactly like I said, you know, sexual abuse, the neighbor, someone down the street, family, friend, etc. Apparently he was also sexually abused again at 14 and raped at 21. And he lived in denial and shame of the abuse. So apparently he's writing this from like a firsthand standpoint. Maybe he did some research also, got some surveys out and things and got like, you know, a realistic number. But I know from experience, I know men who have actually spoken out about this, whether privately to me or online or something of the sort but it happens it happens so often and not knowing doesn't mean it doesn't occur so you know what I'm saying it's just shed some light on that and you know like I always used to say like when I was younger my mom is like really paranoid about everything like as far as people watching us or us being around people and she used to always tell me and my brother like listen if anyone touches you inappropriately if anyone makes you feel uncomfortable scream kick run fight <laughs> like tell me like I don't care and she gave us a speech if they tell you don't tell nobody I'm gonna kill you that's fine if they're gonna kill you they're gonna kill you they're gonna have to kill me too so you know what I'm saying I mean it's easier said than done you know what I'm saying? Like, it's easy to think, oh, yeah, if someone touches me, I'm going to tell my mom. But you don't know until you're in that kind of situation and you experience that kind of fear and that kind of violation. So, like I said, it it sticks with you also. So it might be something you just abhor. And it's just there's so many levels to it. OK, there's also Nicole Dennis Ben. Um, on the first episode, I spoke about um, this person because I was trying to remember the name of her book. <laughs> it's called Here Comes the Sun. Um 
I started reading that one, actually. That's what I'm currently on right now. She is a Jamaican-born woman, and she left in... Oh, it doesn't say what year. She left when she was 17 years old to attend Cornell University. This is her first book, Here Comes the Sun. Um, she is a lesbian. <laughs> I followed her on Instagram. She lives with her wife, and she, you know what I'm saying, it's, it's so many stories. There's another one who would say, you know, I... I want to go home, but it's the culture. So there's a couple interviews that she did. She did an interview with Owl and with Marlon James also, <laughs> funny enough. But she said that she basically writes for people who have no voice, no platform, and no community, which in an essence is also the point of this podcast. Because, you know, like I said, it's not necessarily a fact of no voice, but people don't talk about it that much. You know what I'm saying? Like, being Caribbean and being a member of the LGBTQ, like, it's it's one of those things that people, like I said before, people were like, wait a minute, they got gay Jamaicans? And it's ignorant. It's ha ha he he. You can laugh about it all you want. But at the same time, it's it's a sad ignorance. And these things have to be brought to light because at the end of the day, you know, knowing is growing. <laughs> so there's all that. I looked up a couple other people. Apparently, you know, there have been some gay Jamaican authors and gay Jamaican stories for years. Um, Michelle Carla Cliff, born 1946. She's a Jamaican-American author whose notable work includes A Bang, No Telephone to Heaven, and Free Enterprise. So there's that, you know. There's also Claude McKay from, like, the 1920s. It's, there's a shit ton of them out there these are just a few that caught my eye and you know just wanted to bring my attention to it um i wanted to talk briefly about other things you know we talk about cultural appropriation all the time and you know how everyone just loves the culture and i came across this book and i was so hyped about it and then i looked into the bio and the author and <sighs> the person who wrote the book isn't even jamaican because I was going to say, you know, they were they're white. But I was like, that doesn't matter because Jamaicans, we have everybody. So it doesn't it doesn't matter the color. But this is an English man. He wrote a book called Fagamuffin. <laughs> Just pause for effect. And the book... I didn't even read into it. I think I saw the author's bio and I just was so turned off by it. But apparently he's one of those people that, you know, just loves the culture and... He just wants to shed light and all this. And I mean, it's for a good reason. So I can't even be like a complete hater. <laughs> but he um, he's in England. He He's written quite a few books on, you know, African-American culture, black culture, just cultures that aren't white. And he's getting, you know, some fame from it. He's doing good. But I just, me personally... It turned me off from it because, first of all, you see the name Fagamuffin and you automatically think, OK, yeah, that sounds like something somebody will call you if, you know, you go to school in Jamaica and you move a kind of way, you know. So I saw that and I was like, oh, maybe this is someone documenting their life is, you know, going through school in Jamaica. And I mean, I'm pretty sure that's probably what the book is about, but I would prefer me personally I would want that from an actual Jamaican standpoint and experience rather than someone else who did research to find out about it. And, you know, like it's not a <laughs> it's not a it's not a project. So there's that. But there's quite a few other books out there. Like I said, um, there's a whole arsenal of things that I came across when I was looking, but I'm not going to stretch it out on that. But there's it's quite a few. Um I was reading, you know, everyone's talking about, what was it? I can't even go, I forgot the name of the movie, Black Panther. <laughs> um, and I actually found out that Jimmy Cliff, if anyone is familiar with him, his daughter is actually in the movie. Um, I saw that and I was like, look at us. His daughter was born in Brazil, though, because apparently he's really, really famous there and she was born there of course but she still identifies and everything her name is nabaya b <laughs> but she it's her major it's her debut it's her first role and she's a singer and songwriter like her father um her older sister is in pub is a publicist and does television production and things of that nature but 
of course, you know, her father brought her into music. For anyone who doesn't know who Jimmy Cliff is, just look up the film, The Harder They Come. <laughs> that whole soundtrack I fell in love with for like, psh, when I discovered it, I was I played it out. Like I played that CD out. But yeah, I was looking it up and I was like, look at us just out here, you know, coming through and breaking through and everything. She went to um, Pace University in New York and she's currently still working on completing her um her courses in theater there she where is this let me see oh she's played in a couple of films a couple like smaller productions of course and it won a tour new award was it school girls I, I just think it's interesting that her last name is b i don't know if that's her real last name or if that's just one of those stage name type of thing because everywhere i'm reading it's referring to her as b b b and i'm just like like b e the letter b e but you know it's it's pretty awesome i just think it's amazing that we are literally putting our hands in everything all the major things that's going on you know we're we're finding our way through that has nothing to do with lgbtq that's just me plugging jamaica <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's just, you know, a lot of people, of course they mentioned Lupita, but everyone knows that she's in there and Angela Bassett and Chadwick Boseman, Forrest Whitaker, all of those. If you haven't heard of Black Panther, I don't know what rock you've been hiding under. I haven't seen it yet. I'm waiting until it, it's not going to die down, but I'm waiting till, you know, most of the hype of it dies down before I actually go sit in theaters and watch it. I want to watch it like in a daytime when people aren't around, <laughs> But I know that's gonna that's not gonna be until it's basically on film, like on TV. But you know, just waiting until it's not jam packed and so chaotic. Um, what else do I want to talk about? Do, 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 do. <laughs> My producer's looking at me like I'm crazy. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> Listen, I'm giving it real. Okay, if you want to cut it out, you can cut it out. But um, oh, there was another story a couple weeks ago, which. I thought this was really ridiculous. It's it just lets you know that even though we're in 2018, everyone loves to say, oh, my gosh, it's 2018. You know, things aren't really that crazy anymore. Um, there was a story about these two girls that got suspended from high school because during a talent show, one of them asked their girlfriend to go to the dance with her. There was a huge uproar about it. One of her friends helped her orchestrate it, made like a huge production. The girlfriend, you know, said yes, of course. She was in the audience, but the friend and the girlfriend who asked were both suspended. There is in school suspension, but at the same time, it's <laughs> it's like they're going to prom. Like, why would you not want? I mean, everyone else gets to do it. If a straight couple did it, it wouldn't have been a problem, honestly speaking, because things like this happen all the time. You see it all over the Internet. Cute little displays of affection between kids, teenagers, where, you know, a boy brings out a huge marching band and asks his girlfriend, will you go to prom with me? Or, you know, they bring out banners and all types of things, you know, flood her locker with things and ask. And it's like straight people get to do these things. And, you know, lesbians, they do a little thing, you know, I mean, it wasn't granted. It was in the middle of the talent show, their appearance there, things of that nature. But so what? <laughs> you know what I'm saying like, so what? You want to ask your girlfriend a prom, ask your girlfriend a prom, however you see fit. They got suspended for it. I think that was messed up, but it happens. It was in Alabama. Eh. <laughs> so, you know, some parts of America are not as forward thinking as others, but they <laughs> they basically said that the principal ended up going on the PA system and making an announcement, apologizing to people for the shock and all the like, you know, chaos around. I'm just like chaos i'm pretty sure people were like oh or probably just you know taking it back a little bit like oh snap you're asking okay cool but all of that though like you're making it way more of a bigger deal than it actually is the girl just wants to bring her girlfriend to prom <laughs> like that is it but it's okay though you know um i'm glad it wasn't like an extreme suspension but the fact that they were penalized for it is ridiculous to me i don't completely don't agree with that at all like not even in the slightest bit i was um I'm wondering, though, like if it's one of those things that it gets carried on like further on, like, OK, this happens now. But if someone does it again, is it going to be the same consequence or is it one of those things where like she basically paved the way for someone else to be able to do it? And it's not that big of a deal. I'm hoping that's the direction it goes in. But like I said, some places aren't as forward thinking as others. So you never know. They might still feel 
like threatened or <laughs> whatever it is by it and don't of course they don't agree with it there's states that see you know gay marriage laws and they don't want to i forgot which judge that was that was denying people like even though it passed in the state and it's you know federal law like hey they can get married now <laughs> it was just like no they're not getting married in my state i'm not signing off on this and i don't know but we'll see i've been getting quite a lot of feedback from you guys thank you so much for everyone that listens and tunes in um it just basically confirms for me that i'm doing this like for the right reasons like i'm so grateful for all the likes and comments and everything that you guys have given like i've been getting feedback people have been you know trying to find the link i've put it in the bio so it's there for everyone it's we're available on soundcloud <laughs> it's pointless talks podcast on itunes pointless talks podcast all of that you know someone actually messaged me and is like listen i'm <laughs> 10 minutes into your first episode and this is exactly what i need and i'm just like oh yay <laughs> yes and like little victories so you know share tell your friends leave feedback you can comment on what is it on soundcloud you can leave feedback there or on apple Podcasts. you can rate us five stars you know keep your negative opinions to yourself <laughs> um if you guys have any questions or suggestions anything that you guys want to you know hear about on the show or anything that you have questions about you're curious about i'll try my best to answer <laughs> you can send questions and everything to pointlessquestions at gmail.com that's pointless with three s's p-o-i-n-t-l-e-s-s-s questions spelled regular q-u-e-s-t-i-o-n-s at gmail.com everything is pointless the same way three s's instagram twitter tumblr if you have it um yeah just everything everywhere you can find me it's pointless talks um you know just like i said everything it, this all means a lot to me um considering i'm here alone i don't know yet <laughs> i'm doing an episode next week might do like a short one like this one again just so you know there's constant contact out i'll keep looking up things i'll keep interacting with you guys i'm currently still responding to all messages <laughs> and comments you know until it gets crazy and i'm gonna have to just do like one massive thing it says thanks to everyone <laughs> but for now it's still you know cute little family with us um I'm going to wrap this up. It was like 30 minutes or so, you know, nice little snippet. Um, like I said, you know, same thing as every week, whether you got here on purpose or by fate. Thank you for tuning in and we'll see you soon.